What's up guys, welcome to part 3 of my Smite Magic the Gathering card collection. If you haven't seen parts 1 and 2, you can definitely check those out first if you like. I do have some edits in this video, so if you want to see how the, the cards originally looked, you can definitely check out parts 1 and 2 first. If not, I will just talk about the card in general, so you can just kind of hang tight and, and watch it in this video. Um, so... If you like Magic the Gathering, if you like Smite, I hope you like this video. I tried to take gods from the game and make them as realistic as possible in, in, as far as cards go. And when I first started making these, I made most of them really overpowered. So I tried to ease it up a little bit, make them a little bit more realistic. Of course, they're still really strong because all of them are mythic rares. But hopefully they're a little bit more toned down and that's what the edits are for. Of course, every time I make a, a card, I get feedback or I kind of analyze it myself and say, well, maybe I should do this and change the cards. So this is all in good fun. These aren't real cards, obviously. These are all just because I enjoy doing this. Um, if you would like to make your own cards, maybe Smite themed or just any other theme, you can go to this website. It's mtgcardsmith.com and make your own free account. So it's pretty fun. I just do it just because it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do. So we'll get started. We'll start on the right here with Hell, Queen of the Underworld. So, um, she costs 5 mana. That symbol on the top right means that you can pay either a white mana or a black mana to cast her. She has two activated abilities. She also has lifelink, which means that when she deals damage, you gain that much health. Uh, her first activated ability is you can pay 6 mana. And again, they can be either white mana or black mana. And then you have to tap Hell. And for each white mana you use to cast this, you can gain that much health. For each black mana you use, you deal that much damage. So that's basically directly tied to Hell's theme of kind of, you know, the healer and the damage dealers. You know, she has these two sides to her. So you can use all of it to heal you, or you can use some of it to heal, some of it to damage, all of it to do deal damage, whatever you want. It's a very, like, high utility kind of ability. And then the second one is you can pay two, either white or black mana. And target creature is indestructible and gains a lifelink until end of turn. So that's just another buff. Um, I may, in, if I make a part four, I may nerf this card to just have that first ability cost four mana. But we'll see. She is a four four as well, so she's pretty strong in general. I think she might need a nerf, but again, this is just like the first draft of hell. So that's her. The next card is Bakasura. So Bakasura is a black creature. I thought about maybe, maybe making him like a black red or something, but I think black makes sense, goes well with his theme. So he has double strike, which means that he deals both first strike and regular damage, so he deals damage twice. And also you can sacrifice a creature and put two plus one plus one counters on him. It's a nice little buff. Again, goes with his theme of devouring minions and, and creatures, so that's pretty cool. I thought black made sense. Uh, he costs three mana and he's a three three, so... Nice little strong card, not too over overly complicated or anything. Um, Amuz and Cab is next. He is a green. He costs three mana, and he's a two one. So he's pretty weak stat wise, but his ability is very strong, and I think it it's kind of an obvious ability. So he you can pay X mana, which is basically a variable, and then you have to pay it one forest, and then tap Amuz and Cab, and you can place X11B tokens onto the battlefield with haste, but you have to destroy them after this turn, so that's like his swarm, swarm ability. You can just summon a bunch of bees to go in, deal damage, and then, you know, again, you have to do the same thing every turn, though. So, it's a very expensive ability, depending on how much mana you want to spend, but he can also be an early game card. Let's say you just want to pay the three mana and then pay, like, two for the X, just to put two B tokens out there. You know, you can do that, so... He's pretty strong. He may need a nerf, maybe a higher mana cost or something, but, you know, I think that that card's pretty fun and goes well with his theme. Uh, Kuzumbo is next. So Kuzumbo is pretty expensive. He costs 5 mana. He's a blue-green, which is actually a combination I don't see very often in, in Magic, at least when I used to play. I, don't, I haven't played Magic in a while. Um, but blue-green is not very common because it's kind of tough to make cards fit that. I think like amphibious or reptile creatures go very well with that theme. But so that's why Kuzumbo made sense for, for that combination. 
So he has Island Walk, which means that he can't be blocked if the defending player controls an island. It's a very specific ability, but, you know, it's a nice little addition. Kind of makes sense for him. And his second ability is supposed to be like his Shield of Thorns, or the, the Thorns ability, whatever that is called, the spike, the Shell Spikes. Um, so if he's dealt two or more damage, he gets to deal two damage to target creature. So that's a nice little buff. And then the last one is you can tap him, and target creature cannot attack or block. I put that in there because it, it's similar to like his, his push or his ultimate, very high disruptive type of ability. And also the control makes sense in blue decks because the blue is a very control type of color uh, focused. Um, so he is also a 3-5, which, you know, pretty, again, pretty tanky, which makes sense. Um, I have Wingblade here, so I was thinking about doing some item cards. I don't have any others. Wingblade is the only one I've done so far. But uh, it's a rare artifact. It costs one mana. And equi equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. And it costs one to equip, so it's very cheap, and you get some, you know, pretty, pretty solid stats. For it. Um, so those are the first five. I think we have 20 cards total, so there's going to be 15 more to go. Um, so Vamana is next. Vamana actually I don't think is too overpowered. I think he's actually pretty balanced. Um, he's another pretty simple card. He costs four mana. He has the ability Prowess, which means that when you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And then he also has a Monstrosity 2, which means that when you pay the 4 mana, you can put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And so he would turn into a 5-4. I put Monstrosity in there just because of his ultimate. You know, that kind of synergy made sense. Um, and again, very simple card, you know, not too much to it. And I love that art too. I think the art kind of fits very well with, with magic in general. So the Morgan is next. This is probably one of the most fun cards. Also, the easiest card I've ever made um, when doing these Smite Magic cards because the, it basically made itself. It was, it was just too simple to make this card. Um, so she costs two mana. She's a, a green-black, and she has the ability Morph. So I'll read it, and it says that you may cast this card face down as a 2-2 two -two creature for three colorless mana, and then you can turn it face up at any time you want, if you pay that more cost. So you actually, it would not be in your best interest to pay the two mana for her casting cost because if you do that, you will not be able to activate this second ability which says when the Morrigan is turned face up, she gains the abilities of target creature. She also gains that creature's power and toughness. So that's basically her ultimate in Smite, just in magic now. And again, very easy ability to kind of add into her card. A lot of utility, you can put a card in your deck that you want a copy of and just use the Morrigan for that. Um, and again, but you can also, if you want, just pay the two mana and she's just a 2-2, two -two, but you don't get anything for it. So she's pretty cool. Again, this synergizes very well with her theme and smite. And uh, yeah, if I had a black green deck, I would absolutely have that card in it. Pretty fun. So Apwash, Horrific God of Decay is next. He is a black card. You could have, you could, I could have made him a red black, but I think just black makes sense. Um, so he's a two two. He has fear, which means that if the defending player doesn't have a black creature, they can't. You cannot block or attack this creature with anything but another black creature. Is basically what that means. Um, also, you can pay one black and tap up wash and deal one damage to target creature. The reason I have that ability is because it goes with the second ability. Um, and so I'll read this. If it doesn't make sense, just kind of read it again yourself. I don't want to explain it too much. But if he deals damage to a creature, you get to place a DK counter on that creature. At the beginning of each of your upkeeps, place a DK counter on all creatures who have been damaged by all Pwash. If a creature has three DK, DK counters on it, destroy it. So this is basically a timer for destroying creatures. Um, it's kind of like a roundabout way to destroy a creature. You deal the damage with the first ability, and then after two turns, the next two turns, that creature will just automatically be dead. Um, so it's, it's again, it's a pretty slow card. It takes a while to, to actually destroy the creature when you deal damage. 
but it's a really good way to do it, and again, it's a cheap card, so I don't think it's too strong, but if you want like a, a late game black deck, you could absolutely put that in there. So Chiron is the first, I think the first edited card that I have in here. I had him in part two, and so in this, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the nerfs that I've made to a bunch of cards, because some of them were overpowered. Chiron before only cost two mana, he was just green-white. Now he costs three, I added, I added an extra colorless mana in there. So before he had three abilities, which you could activate, now he only has one. Um, he still has Vigilance. And now you can also you can still pay a green, a white, and tap him to draw a card, but you don't have those other two abilities. And he's still a 3-3, so definitely a lot weaker, but still a very, very good card, a card you'd probably want if it was real. Um, <laughs> because drawing cards is obviously super valuable in, uh, in Magic. Nike is next. Nike is a white creature. Um, she costs 5 mana, so she's pretty expensive, but it's worth it because she has a lot of stuff. So she has Flying, Vigilance, and First Strike. Um, kind of goes well because she's like this, you know, this Brute Warrior type of fighter, you know. Um, and white, a lot of white soldier cards have Vigilance, just a very common theme. Um, and of course Flying made sense too. And she has also a small little buff to her entire team, which is a lot like her passive and Smite. So when she enters the battlefield, you get to place a plus zero, plus one counter on all creatures you control. Um, so, very simple card, buffs your team, gets some awesome stats on it, and she's a 3-4 flying, so not too bad. Uh, pretty straightforward card, too. So, next is Scotty. Scotty is probably my favorite card now that I've made. This I just love the, the ability I came up with for her, and of course, you can see Calder right next to her. I thought, you know, when I'm making Scotty, I have to have Calder in there somehow, so Calder is going to be uh, part of Scotty, and we will talk about how they kind of work together. So Scotty is a 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, so not super strong. But her first ability is you can pay X mana and a blue, and you can also tap her to search your library for Calder and then place him onto the battlefield. That's her first ability, and we'll talk about what that X means when we get to Calder. Um, and then her second ability says... If she blocks or is blocked by a creature, that creature does not untap during its owner's next untap phase. This is a very common blue mechanic. Something that pops up in a lot of like frost or ice themed cards. So I thought I'd add that to Scotty, kind of made sense. Um, so yeah, that Scotty will go into to Calder to talk about how he works. So let's say you bought like a booster pack or some kind of like a fat pack for magic. Um, you would have to get these cards together. You wouldn't just get Scotty or just get Calder. They would always be in the same booster pack or same pack because they, they do go hand in hand together. Um, so Calder costs two mana, again, just like Scotty. He is, you can see the power and toughness are two stars. Those are basically variables. So if you paid Calder's casting cost to summon him, he's just a 2-2 two -two, and he doesn't really do anything. Um, so you can do that, but it's really not optimal. You would the best way to summon Calder would be to use Scotty um, and because, because of the second ability. So if you use Scotty to summon Calder to get him out of your library, um, he then becomes an XX where X is the amount of mana you use in Scotty's activated ability. So back on Scotty's card, I talked about that X. That goes straight into this. And so you can make, basically pay a bunch of mana to make Calder this super strong um, wolf creature. So it really is in your best interest to, let's say you draw Calder when you get your hand, you should probably wait until Scotty shows up um, to, to cast him, but let's say you don't get Scotty, you can still use your casting cost just to make him a 2-2. Two -two. So I think that's a pretty cool combo, um, made sense to have her with, with Calder, you know, goes very well together. So simple, fun, I would absolutely have that in a blue deck if it was real. Um, <laughs> So Terra's next. Terra is another card that I edited. I nerfed her. So in the second, uh, in part two, I had her cost two green mana, and now she costs four, which I think was necessary because her ability is very strong. And she also had Hexproof before. I took Hexproof out. She only has Defender now. And I also nerfed her toughness. She was a 0-5.
now she's just a 0-4. So she can attack, but she can give you three forests to your mana pool. So much needed nerf. She was too strong before. So I just kind of nerfed a few things on her. Uh, Fenrir is next. So Fenrir has the same ability as before, Devour 3. You can read that if you want. I'm not going to read it. Um, he costs 5 mana. The only thing I did to him was I nerfed his power and toughness. He was a 5-5 before. Now he's a 3-3. So not as strong as before. Next is On Her. On Her is another edit. Um, so he he costs the same. Everything on this card is exactly the same, except his power and toughness went from 5-4 to 3-3. Three, three. Uh, next is Bologna. So Bologna was a card when I made part 2. I was like, eh, she's really not that strong. And then I thought about it, and I realized she was very strong. So I did nerf her. She cost the exact same as before. Um, she's still a 3-3, three, three, but I removed her second ability, which buffs her, her allies. So now she doesn't buff her allies. All she does is she has haste, and she has that Outlast ability. So um, this is still an extremely strong card, super aggro. To be able to pay 2 mana for a 3-3 three, three with haste is very, very strong. Because let's say you're playing against a blue deck or a green deck. They're, it's going to take a long time for them to get their cards out, which means you can deal like... You can deal three damage for maybe three or four turns, which is very, very, um, very big in, in Magic, let me tell you. Aggro decks are very annoying to play against. Um, Kepri is next. So Kepri is being nerfed for the second time. I nerfed him in part two. I think he needed another one, so he costs five mana. Uh, still has to spend three for two white mana, but I removed his second ability, which gave all allied creatures plus one, plus four. I just took that out. <laughs> it was too strong. Now he just gives creatures you control vigilance. He's a 3-5. I think that's pretty simple and uh, kind of makes sense. Uh, next is Vulcan. I I nerfed Vulcan, but I also kind of buffed him too. So he got he got a different kind of treatment. So cost the same amount of mana. Still has haste. I did nerf his, his toughness. He was a 3-3. Now he's a 3-2. Um, and I changed his ability. So I, I took out... He had a second ability that said... Uh, when you enter the battlefield, you deal 5 damage to target creature. I took that out. Now he just has this ability, which says you can pay 2 red mana to summon a 0-1 turret, which has the ability to deal 1, uh, tap the, the turret, deals 1 damage to target creature or player. So this is stronger. It's kind of a buff because that's damage that can't be blocked. If the turret, this is the turret right here, if the turret was just a 1-1 one, one and you attacked with it, you can block that, but you cannot block this ability. So that does make his turret a lot stronger, um, but still very weak. You can kill it pretty easily. And this is just a token, so you can't actually put this in your deck. It's just a token. Um, so that's the changes I made to Vulcan. And then finally, the last card that I edited is going to be Zeus. So I, again, nerfed him in Part 2. This is his second nerf. He is still... Uh, an 8 mana creature, so very expensive. He had Vigilance and Unblockable before. I took those out, so now he's just Indestructible, which means that any ability that would destroy him does not. You cannot do that, but you can attack him, block him, all that kind of stuff. Um, I also nerfed the second ability. It used to cost 3 mana, now it costs 4. And that, I think, is it. Oh, sorry, the Power and Toughness. He was a 6-6, six, six. now he's a 5-5. Five, five. So, again, I've just been nerfing him. I think he's in a better spot now. He is Zeus, so I do want him to be strong, but I think he's in a better spot now. So, those are the 20 cards that I have for this video. I will be hopefully making a part 4 soon. I do want to make all the gods eventually and maybe get into items. So, if there... Well, first off, if there's a god in here that is your favorite god, I hope you enjoyed the card that I made for it. And secondly, if you have suggestions for gods you want to see... Please let me know. Uh, you might want to check out parts 1 and 2 first, because I did talk about other gods in those. But uh, items, gods, any suggestions would be great. And uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.